dog. I try to make it fun. I try to make it positive. They want to learn. Sit. Good boy. You make sure you let him know exactly what he did right. Good boy. Good boy. We're there for the safety of our animals. Now that hurt the both of us. And the director says, I got to have that dog. No, no, no. We've had directors say to us, the dog is hitting the mark better than the actors. <laughs> There's usually a set of standards that each trainer holds for themselves. Yeah. All of our dogs can sit and lie head down, down and head down and head up on your side, straighten up. There's a list that we call basics, which would be definitely more than what you'd call basics if you're an average dog at home. On your feet, back up, back up. When you're training a dog, you've got basics that you're going to train the dog that every dog should know. You know, come and stay and sit and retrieve and go with someone. The way I begin to teach a dog is the same way that you raise a kid. I try to motivate. It's like the teacher that you had in school, the ones you learned the most from, they motivated you and you wanted to learn. It was fun. Good boy, that's good. Every dog has its own personality. No, no, you can't quit. No, you can't quit. Anyone who thinks that they can train a dog with one set of rules is mistaken. Every dog's personality dictates how you will train that dog. Some dogs are very shy, and so they need a different approach on them. They need a gentler, softer spoken voice. Some dogs are very hyper and, and high energy, and you need to stay calm to keep them calm. All right. So every personality dictates how long it'll take to train the dog. Toby, straighten up, stay. Basically, for the first uh, six, eight months, you want to learn their personality, as I always say. Let them be a puppy, and then you want to start the training. The techniques I use, I use all positive reinforcement in my training. You never want to have a heavy hand. Good boy. I recommend positive reinforcement. Things that are fun for the dog, that you're encouraging the dog in a positive way with a positive attitude. Teaching him to sit up and then rewarding them in the position that I like them in. You gotta have uh, control with them, so you wanna train them on what's called a mark. On a mark. Mark? On a mark. The dog has to go to an exact Good point boy. and stay. Good boy, stay. Speaks a, is a big thing. They always gotta have a speak. Speak. Cool. You can get one trained within six, eight months, or it could take uh, three to four years. It depends on the dog. Good stay. The bigger the appetite for the dog, the better it is to train. Get or you gotta have something stay. that they're focused on, like a ball Good. or a toy. Good. And you make sure you always give positive reinforcement. Sometimes you want to pay them two and three times if they've done a long take. The first thing I try to do is get the script. Because a lot of times there's gags in there that are written for a small dog, but they're asking for a large dog. And that's the type of thing they don't understand. You try to make sure you don't pick a really laid back type of a dog that has no energy when you have a high energy show. Eventually you get a pick of a few that you think would really fit for this and you try to sell those on the project. A director, when he looks for a dog in a casting call, he looks for sometimes just characteristics. Sometimes my best trained dog won't get the part because the director will look for a specific feature, such as big droopy ears. They want maybe a comedy movie, calls for bigger jowls, maybe the way the dog walks. He's got a goofy walk. Generally, they pick from the look um, more so than <laughs> what they're trained to do, and then we'll train it. Sometimes there's castings. We'll take the dogs down to castings, even callbacks, and the, the dogs actually have to audition. You show up with your dog, and they'll have a room and with the director or whoever's casting the dogs, and you'll go in and show them what they're, they're asking to see, whether it's personality, whether it's behavior, calmness, energy. Dogs. They don't exactly have headshots, but they have the form of a headshot. It's a full body shot, usually on all fours. You want to see the physique of the dog. You want to see uh, basically how his, uh, his front looks. So you want to get like an angle that you kind of uh, use your imagination with all sides. There are some similarities between acting dogs and actual human actors. They work like actors work on a set, and a dog will walk in and hit a mark just like an actor would. A lot of times in films, you don't realize it, but dogs have doubles. Features, you tend to want to double for your dog to do the running, where one dog might do the running and the other dog might do the real intricate. Being with an actor, your other dog's sort of your stunt dog, does the swimming, the running, the jumping, the high energy stuff. It's a lot of 12 hour days, five, six days a week. It's very common to have a double so that you save the energy of both of your dogs. It's hard when you come to uh, like Jack Russell's and Basset Hounds because they have spots so you actually have to bring them to a makeup artist and they'll actually dye the spots the exact way as far as dogs working on set or any animal at that, we gotta make sure there's obviously no people feeding the dog on set. You'd be amazed how many people, they come with their pockets full of treats. Next thing you know, when I call the dog on set, the dog's more focused on the guy that gave him the uh, little biscuit. Our dogs don't have any uh, contracts. 
or any uh, set amount of hours. We play it by what we know the dog can pull off and, and what he can't. They have an hourglass, just like we all do. We have to rest, we have to take breaks, we have to go eat, drink water. And the dogs, they have the same exact needs. I hear that. We can't work them to death. Like a lot of times, uh, especially in the past, they've been worked so hard where the dog basically, he'll just collapse. And we can't do that. We have to make the set a fun place for a dog. Otherwise, you're gonna have a real hard time on set. The dog's gonna, never gonna wanna go on set again. The dog's always provided with a place to stay. But depending upon the budget of the show that you're on, the amount of hype that the animal has received, they will from time to time have a trailer for the animal or a dressing room. A good day or a great day on the set is when you have trained and you get to the set and you go in there and you just do it. You, two takes and you're done. Good boy. When people give you the comments that the dog made up for lost time, Sit. that's pretty amazing and, and that's a good day at set. You're so good, aren't you? A bad day on set is if you were to get there after prepping and your animal not do a single thing you were asking and just going downhill, shot after shot, not being able to fulfill what the director wants from you, that would be a very bad day on set. Did you just talk? No. In some of the, the different projects that I did, on Man's Best Friend, I was brought in by Clint Rowe, the head trainer on that show, to do some of the supporting uh, animal actors. For instance, I did a, an orange cat that the dog chases, goes up a tree, and eats the cat. Female collie. A little Jack Russell we did in, in, in there also. Take him to the hole, Nikki. I mean, woof, woof. In Little Nicky, the dog that we used, his name was Harvey. He was an English bulldog. Now get off the track and come with me. One of the hardest things about that film going into it is that the dog had to keep his mouth closed because he was going to be a talking character. And now what they do is they computer generate the mouth movement. I don't know. This is a little out of my league. If you know bulldogs, keeping their mouth closed and not panning, that's one of the major dilemmas. Tough shots working uh, in Grand Central Station in New York with people all over the place, working on the streets of New York. Sidewalk equals safety, middle of the road equals death. Unlike LA and different places where you shut down a street when you're working, they don't shut these streets down in New York. It just keeps going, and you're just working alongside the streets. We've been ratted out. It was challenging for a little bulldog. Roy, come. The dog in the hidden was Jake. He went in and auditioned against a lot of other dogs, and he just got the role because he was a good snarler, and he was a good working dog. One of the toughest shots in the hidden that Jake had to do was he had to run and jump through this French slatted uh, window, and he jumped through that. That was a tough shot. It wasn't like jumping through a candy glass window. It was actually a blind jump. In the mask, Max uh, was the dog that played Milo. He really hadn't done anything of any significance up to that point. His training was all right. He had his basics, but really he needed quite a bit of work for that film. And as you saw, it, it just really worked out well. And one of the reasons is Jim Carrey had a Jack Russell at home. Get him, find him! He was fabulous with the dog. And that makes a big difference. When an actor is into the dog and relates well with the dog, it really helps your job. You know, you're not supposed to jump up. No. It's against doggy ordinance. I'll tell you, one of the hardest things to train this dog was him catching the frisbee. And people go, well, that's an easy shot. This dog couldn't catch. Ow. He just was a bad catch. I mean, you'd toss him the frisbee, he'd maybe catch it one out of ten. Get it! We did about ten takes, and he finally caught one. And that set up the gag later for him jumping up and getting the mask. So it was an important piece, but he was not good at it. Wait, that dog. Training studio animals is a great amount of fun because you have the ability to say, I want my dog to do this and behave this way, and you can do that. It's a game of chess. This isn't checkers. You have to learn their next move in order to stay one step ahead of the training. Drop it. If you don't know the personality, they're not going to be a very well-trained dog. 